Hello my friends, today we are back in Luminar Neo and we will edit a hummingbird photo. I've been taking hummingbird photos for the last uh, week or so. I have so many of them in my garden and uh, I already edited some of them. I will show you a couple of images. There is one of them. This is the one we will edit today. So this is the raw image straight from the camera. Then I also edited this one, this one. I really like this one. I like how the wings are completely straight back. This one, I really like the background a lot, but it was like, you know, noon sun. So it got a really strong shadow on the chest. So I really like it, but that part, I don't like it so much. This is a composite I made with some butterflies, another hummingbird on a flower. And this is another composite I did. This uh, butterfly, it so happened, was on this flower when the hummingbird came to approach. And as the hummingbird came to approach the flower, the butterfly flew away. And unfortunately, I did not get the shot the way it is. The butterfly was already gone out of the frame by the time the hummingbird reached the flower. So I took the two shots and I combined them. One shot was just with the flower and the butterfly. And then the other shot had the flower with the hummingbird and the butterfly was out of the frame. But I mixed the two images together and come up with this image. I also have this image I really like. The little hummingbird was perched on a branch. But... Uh, Today we will edit this image. So as you can see, I shot this one with my Sony A1 200 to 600 millimeter lens. Um, I shot at 582 millimeter, ISO 640, negative 1.3 exposure, F6.3, 1320 of a second. So this is 1320 of a second handheld. So pretty slow shutter speed for such a long lens, but I had to do that because as you can see over here, this streak, it was raining when I took the image, so I had no light pretty much. It was pretty dark outside. So how do we edit this image? The first thing I want to do with this image, take the crop tool and do a pretty severe crop. Let's see, I want the bird to be on the rule of thirds. I want the swing to be almost in the middle. Also, you can see it's not straight up and down the chain, so I'm going to straighten it by rotating it. And something like that, the eye is perfectly on the rule of thirds, and I like that. Now, and to develop, I will raise the exposure a little bit because it is underexposed. I will add some smart contrast, not too much, maybe 15. I'll bring down the highlights because the... The feathers on the neck, it's a little bit too bright. And I will open up the shadows to something like that. Now we are losing some contrast and saturation. So we will have to go and add maybe a little bit of contrast here onto the curve tone. Just a little bit, just like that, a very slight S curve. And then I also want to go into color and increase the vibrant to maybe 27. That looks good to me. Let's see our image so far. This is our before. This is the after. This is the before. This is the after. And we are doing great. The next thing I want to do is bring some life into the bird's eye. I like to have a good catch light. So for that, I will go into develop. I will raise my exposure a little bit, maybe add some whites and bring down the blacks a little bit. And then with the masking tool, I will use the brush and just paint only on the eye. I try not to go on the whites because I don't want to ever overexpose those whites. Something like that. And let's see, this is our before and after. Before and after. That just brought a little bit of spark into the bird's eye. And that is looking great. I want to go into enhance, maybe add a little bit of accent. And that looks good. The next thing I want to do, I feel like the bird, it's a little bit too cool tone. So I want to go into develop. Into the white balance and I will use the eyedropper tool. And let's see if we change, if we click here. And it looks like that actually added more cool tone to it and so magenta. I don't like that cool tone. I'm going to actually increase it a little bit. 
towards the yellow. And that looks better, maybe a little bit too yellow. Maybe I'll keep this one at zero, I'll just leave the magenta. So let's see the before and after the white balance shift. This is the before, this is the after. Okay, maybe that is a little bit better. I also want to add a vignette. So for that, I will go to develop and I will take down the exposure a little bit, something like that. And then with the mask, I will use a radial gradient and just draw it around the bird. Make sure pretty good, good feathering, something like that. And let's see. That looks good. You want to create a vignette, but you don't want to be too obvious. You don't want to go like that. So negative 40, I think that was great for this image. Let's see our image again from the beginning. This is our before. This is the after. Before and after. I do want to add just a little bit more color to the bird. So for that, I will go into color. And I'll go to saturation this time, increase the saturation to maybe nine, and I will use masking and a brush. And I just wanna go over the greens just to bring them out even a little bit more. Something like that. And this is the before and after, before and after. Just a little bit of change, not too much. Let's see again our image. This is the before, this is the after, and I think we came a really long way and the image looks a lot better. Now the one last thing I want to do with this image is to remove the noise. Because normally I will just take this into topaz denoise or remove noise, but look there's quite a bit of noise here. So for demonstration purposes I will just use the Neos denoise tool. So open the denoise tool and then I will move the luminosity slider until I see that noise being gone. At 17, we still have quite a bit of noise. Let's see, 28. And the noise is gone. So now if I click before and after, you can see all that grain is gone. So this is the before and after. Now the problem with denoising an image, usually you will remove some sharpness from your image. So because of that, I like to go into masking and use a brush and erase this denoise from my bird. And if I would use topaz denoise, I do not need to do that because topaz denoise does sharpen your image a little bit. So it removes the noise and sharpen it back and you're not losing any details. But when I remove noise into, you know, Lightroom or Neo, I do like it to remove it from my subject because I do like to keep my subject sharp. So let's see, fit to screen. And this is our image before the noise and after the noise. You cannot really see it. I have to move it back into 100. Let's go to 200. Maybe you can see it better after YouTube compression. So this was our image before I remove the noise and this is the after, before and after. So we got a lot cleaner image. Now, if you are new to this channel and you're new to Luminar Neo and do not know where to start with your edits, I do have a playlist. Uh, I think I have currently around 96, 97 video tutorials on how to use Luminar Neo. Go watch that and that should get you covered for anything you want to learn on Luminar Neo. But that's pretty much it for today. I hope you learned something new and this was useful to you. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.